we're sitting on the banks of the Murrumbidgee River, it's the Murrumbidgee catchment. It's one of the three largest rivers in the Murray-Darling Basin and it rises uh, at the foot of the Snowy Mountains up above Cooma and runs through the Australian Capital Territory, five or six hours from Sydney, then flows west to join the Murray River uh, down below Swan Hill. Uh, and it was one of the first rivers settled by Europeans. Uh, the first explorers came through here, white explorers in the 1820s, and they found there was just enormous numbers of cod and perch in these rivers. So it was the first of the really large rivers to be settled. And the interesting story, everybody knows uh, Murray Cod, it's an icon in the basin. Well, originally it was uh, the Macquarie Cod, which originates from the Macquarie being the first river settled, then it became the Lachlan Cod, then it became the Murrumbidgee Cod, and finally the Murray Cod. When they got to the biggest of the rivers, they stuck with that name. The Murrumbidgee, the first area that I actually started the research on was up here around Canberra because it was the last place where trout cod were found in the Murrumbidgee River. And uh, there was a, a well-known angler who I, I knew, um, Gordon Winter, who's deceased. And I spoke to him in the late 70s, early 80s. He was the last one catching trout cod here for the uh, ACT Conservation uh, Service. And I remember some of his stories. Uh, he grew up around Canberra within his lifetime, what it was like. But some of the people that I searched out, uh, Brian Pratt was the Director of Conservation Services here. He was actively involved in uh, collecting trout cod here to try and save them. And Brian was interesting because he was one of a new breed of anglers that were applying modern fishing techniques to native fish. So in the old days, you know, you used to throw out a barty grub on the line and try and catch cod. He was going out fly fishing for them and lure fishing for them. It was pretty radical stuff back in the 50s and 60s. Um, and Brian had gone to the trouble of speaking to people like the, the Retelix, uh who lived down the river from uh, Canberra. Uh, their family had been here many generations and he got some of their stories on what was here before Burrenjuk Dam. So Brian was a fantastic interview. His technical assistant, uh, Terry Rutso, who was actually going out collecting trout cod, um, he recorded uh, catches of them almost all the way up to Tantangara Dam in the 1960s. Yeah, one of the, the interesting things that happened uh, up here was uh, I was put on to uh, a guy named David Ryrie. The Ryries are early settlers and uh, Brian Pratt talked about uh, David, who was a keen trout fisherman, fly fisherman, and uh, when he was young he used to go out fly fishing for trout cod up, up around uh, Michelago. And uh, I caught up with uh, David and uh, uh, he's got an 11 pound trout cod stuffed hanging in his study. Uh, which he caught in 1967, and he was he was the last one to see them in numbers up that way. In the early days before the snowy scheme. In the 20s and 30s at Breadbow and at Adaminibi there were cod. It was known that there used to be many cod in the Kuma Gorge that looked different to the normal cod. They have caught up to 12, 13 pounds. Back then we hadn't heard about the trout cod. The cod there were different, were more grey in colour, a bit blue around the head. No yellow. As I sit here today, I cannot even begin to imagine how we can sit back and let our beautiful river system be degraded to the state it is today. Gone are all the lagoons, together with all the bird life they used to support. Thousands upon thousands of river red gums, dead or dying from the lack of a drink. The riverbed itself is suffering from drifting sand, which is causing loss of habitat for the fish. The fish can't live in half a metre of water. I could take you down. I've been out at fishing since I was ten. I lived with my uncle, Arthur Charles. Dad was killed when I was four. He taught me how to fish. Back then, well, in the river it was cod, miles of cod. Yellow belly, silver brim. I did catch once the Macquarie perch. We were fishing over an irrigation canal. We caught this brim. It had big white eyes. My uncle said, that's a Macquarie perch. 
We caught one another day in the Murrumbidgee itself. My uncle said they were plentiful in the river in the early days. I haven't seen one since. That was in the 40s when we got them. In the lower Murrumbidgee, down below Burrinjuk Dam, there were three or four people that provide a lot of information, but perhaps the one that um, made the greatest impression on me was uh, Noel Denson. And uh, he lives at Chermit, but he and his father were professional fishermen around the Narandra area. And he told the stories, his father's stories, of the cod being common. They had a pet cod that lived in the river behind their house. They, they would never harm him, a big cod. Uh, the catfish, the golden perch, the silver perch, and towards the end of the, view of the end of the interview with Noel, he became wistful and reflective. And he talked about the changes he'd seen, uh, the river red gums dying, the birds going, the lack of frogs. And it, you could see it was making an impact on him thinking how much the river had changed during his lifetime. And at the end, he made a comment that left its mark on me that uh, when he grew up as a boy, the Murrumbidgee, it wasn't heaven, but it was next door to it.